Hi Dan here, hope you're well. This really is an exercise that I've used for 30 years now and I use it all the time when I make up music, when I read chord charts, when I improvise, when I listen to music and I hear bass lines and I want to figure it out. So I'm, I'm going to show you all of that stuff in this lesson. So first things first, what we're doing here is, you can do this in any key and I really recommend that you do. The example here is C major and we're just playing a scale or first actually the arpeggio. And then we're playing the scale or the mode. Now you can do it the other way around. You can play the scale and the mode and then the arpeggio. Make this your own, okay? So in the key of C major, it's just C to C, no sharps, no flats. So I'm starting with the arpeggio. just one, three, five, seven. I'm doing a seventh arpeggio here. And it's really excellent for your fingers. Here I'm using second, first, fourth, third, fourth. Okay, so it's a good workout already. Keeping the wrist straight, thumb behind the neck, fingers a little bit sort of angled, uh, not completely stiff, but not collapsing either. Keeping alternate plucking going. So it's excellent already for that. When I return to the root, I'm just doing the scale. And what you get if you do that on all the different notes of C major are seven different arpeggios and modes. Okay, well, we'll, we'll sort of unwrap a little bit of this later, but let's do the next one. So this is the second one. Musicians use Roman numerals, so I'm, I'm starting you off. You need to know those, okay? So this is the two. That's a D minor seven, and then you do the D Dorian mode. This is is we're starting on the second note of C major and playing the notes of C major. Remember, there are no sharps, no flats. Very easy. D E F G A B C D. You just do the musical alphabet, which is just A to G, and it starts all over again. So that's why I'm doing C major because there's no sharps, flats. But as I said, you can do this in any key. So D minor seven, D Dorian. There are lots of ways to do this, by the way. It's another way of playing D Dorian. And that's yet another way. So, you know, just figure out different ways if you want. Or just follow the tab or the way I'm doing it, okay? Then the third one, the third chord, we've got E minor seven. E Phrygian. Just E, F, G, A, B, C, D, E. F major seven, that's the four chord. F Lydian. I would recommend you learn the names of the modes, but even if you just knew that's F to F, and you didn't quite know it was the Lydian, don't worry about it. Just know that these are the notes, okay? Then five, we've got a G dominant seventh arpeggio. Now, as we're going here, look, this is the thing. We're learning a lot of good technical sort of things here, but also the fact that a harmonized scale gives you these seven chords. Now this five chord is the only one in this sequence that is this dominant seventh. It's just like a, a letter with, a, with the seven. The mode over this one is G Mixolydian. Then we have A minor seven. A Aeolian, which is just natural minor. Seven chord is B minor seven flat five, otherwise called half diminished. And then it's B Locrian. And then the last one is just the same as the first one again. So use it purely as a technique exercise. Go from here. I want to keep all the notes connected, long, smooth, no, you know, no, jerkiness, no increase in volume, no speeding up. You could use a metronome, of course, but I'm, I'm using technique here. Then you're learning theory because you find that in this little sequence, we get two major seventh chords on the one and the four. We get three minor seventh chords on the two, the three and the six. We get only one of these G, you know, these seventh chords, that's on the five. And we get a minus seven flat five on the seven. This is just hard and fast. Any key you do this in, F, G, F sharp, whatever, it will be the same sequence of 
major, minor, minor, major, etc. So even if you don't quite understand this now, just learn it and I promise you, you'll be playing it a lot. Okay, I'll show you how useful this is already just by being able to read charts. I did a lesson a while back on a really great song to learn, which is I Will Survive, which is basically the same as Fly Me to the Moon. And it goes through chords, these exact chords actually. And so it goes like A minor seven. So if you learn this exercise, and you know, we did A minor seven here, didn't we? It's the same shape as D minor seven and E minor seven. So you learn the shape. So when you see the A minor seven chord, you know what fits over it, okay? Then we've got D minor seven. Okay, so you're playing an arpeggio there, but what if, if you're playing the bass line, they're both minor seven chords, but what if you want to fill in and do some scale notes? Well, remember that the D functions as the two chord in this key, and that was that Dorian thing, so. All those notes that we did on that two chord, they work and they fit equally on that first one here. Then G7, then C major 7. Okay, now that's that Ionian or major scale, that one there. That's said to be its function within this key. It's if it were F major 7, which is the one we go to now actually. There's a reason why certain notes fit over certain chords. So learn this exercise and you'll know that the F chord in this sequence is a major seven, but the notes underlying it, it's not a major scale, nearly a major scale, that Lydian, it's got that sharp four. And this is the reason why it fits because uh, musicians, composers, they take very often, this, this is a real generalization, but so many tunes do this. You take chords from a key, you slam them together, and you've got a song, right? But that F major seven functions a little bit differently to that C major seven. So if you know the notes that fit over it, it works really, really well. Then we've got, we've got a B minor seven flat five. And then we've got an E seven. Now, no matter that it, this is a minor two, five, one, I won't get into it, but you know an E seven because you know a G seven, right? You just do that same shape on the E. And this is why it's gonna help you with reading chord charts because you don't play chords, but you play arpeggios. So learn these arpeggios, you're actually learning four different arpeggios in one exercise. Okay, what about improvisation? Well, I mean, there are hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of things I could show you. I could do hours of this, but let's just not do that. Let's just, I'm gonna to go to the two chord, D7, D minus seven. So I'm taking the arpeggio, that's your D minor seven. I'm only giving it to you in one octave, but don't forget, you can break out and also you don't have to just go up, you go down. But for now, I'll probably just will keep it fairly simple. I'm just making something funky up using the arpeggio, but also the scale notes below. You call it scale mode, same thing, okay? What about this? Let's go, I'm gonna also move, let's go four to five, so the F to the G. I'm gonna move it down here. And I'm reducing, okay? So I'm just doing the root, the third, and the fifth. I'm not bothering with anything else so far but they're both major. Okay, that little run there. What happens over the five, this G in this case, mixolydian, so that's what I'm doing. And there, lydian. Now, this is great for your improvising, for your jamming, for your, you know, let's say you're in, in a rehearsal, the guitarist does that and you hear it's two major chords, well, you can pretty confidently think it's probably gonna be this, right? And 
you can latch onto that, you can improvise, you can jam, you can make up your own bass lines. But also, you know, if you hear... That's not that Green Day bass line that I forgot the name of, but it's very similar, okay? You can hear bass lines being made from this. Now, whether the bass player knows it or not, it doesn't matter. Like, this is just a piece of information you're gonna arm yourself with to make your ear better and to make your pattern recognition on the bass better as well. You will recognize a lot of this stuff in music. Let's do something really simple. Let's just go C, G, F. That's one, five, four. And that's, musicians do use that kind of language. Let's keep the C here on the eighth fret. You've heard that kind of thing before, one, five, four. Now this will help you do it. Now over the four, we now know, major seventh. So if you're making something up over a four chord in a major key, you can do that. If you want to do a fill, got that F Lydian, right? Now all of these notes I'll reiterate just come from C major, so here's C major. So you could just learn those notes and just know that on F it's the pattern but starting on there you don't have to know them as individual modes but I, I find it helps. Let's do another one. Is the six I'm going one, five, six. Little fill, we're on the A, and we're in the key of C major, forward slash A minor, they're related, okay? So that's, that's A minor pentatonic, okay? So, anyhow, any of those notes of the A natural minor, Aeolian work over this. And once you just learn this little set, of arpeggios and underlying modes, I promise you, you're just gonna, you're gonna find so many things that you can do with this. You're gonna hear it in music, um, both in like chord progressions like this, and also like isolated moments where you get like a, you know, you'll hear a Dorian, or like another common one is that five, the, the Mixolydian. You'll hear it sort of isolated on its own, but these modes come from a major scale. One other cool thing you can do is play chords with them. So at the end I did, you know, that one up the octave. If you take the first note, the third note, and the seventh note, and play them together, you have a chord, so. You can start to do interesting little chord movements here. I moved to the E string there, but you can figure out, you know, very simple roots, thirds and sevenths in that position as well. That's kind of cool for your composition. And also if you know, for example, that's the G7, that's the five chord. You do stuff like double stops. A double stop is where you play two notes at the same time. And if you know the chord shape, I'm down here on a G grooving away. There's my G and I know these two notes fit. So I hope you can see how powerful this exercise is. If you can't, just download the PDF and learn it anyway, and the understanding will come in the future, okay? There are so many things you can do with this, but if you have any questions, let me know. Thanks very much for watching. Please do subscribe to the channel and I'll see you on the next video.